Hey folks, welcome back. It's Pat here. I got a chapter 12 problem, and that's hypothesis test for the ratio of population variances. This problem is a pain, okay? So it is very likely that I will not get both of these correct, okay? So, and the reason why it's a pain is because it's extremely tedious and it pieces together a lot of things that you've learned in the rest of chapter 12, along with the previous hypothesis testing that you did using Z and T, all right? So the first thing that I need you to notice is different on these is it's going to ask for a ratio, okay? And so rather than normal hypothesis testing, which we do, like, you know, sample one minus sample two equals zero or does not equal zero, this one, it's going to be a ratio. And so you have to think about it a little bit more difficult in, in, in a little bit more advanced way, okay? Now, what it gives us is it's going to give us an N for two different groups and then the variance for two different groups. We don't care about the means in this one. So... Um, because we're going to use the F statistic to actually test the ratio between the variance of two different groups, all right? Um, some of the problems come up as a table like this. These are actually a little bit easier. We'll see if we get a word problem next. Um, those are considerably more difficult, <laughs> okay? So, but yeah, it's the same thing that you're doing. All right, now the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to write our hypothesis. Can we conclude at the 0.05 significance level that population variance sigma squared 1 for group 1 is greater than the population variance of sigma squared 2? So always start with your hypothesis test in here. And these are a pain to write correctly, so watch very carefully, okay? Okay. So our uh, we always start with our alternate hypothesis by you know punching in whatever claim they're actually making. And so their claim is that population variance for group one is greater than group two. And so as a ratio, we're going to write it like this. So start with this button right here to set up a ratio, and then immediately hit this button here. Okay, because we need to get sigma squared in there. So like that, and then click back on this, and then now hit this button here to get population one, okay? So sigma square, var population variance of the first population, like that. Do the same thing on the bottom, all right? Click this button first, put in your sigma squared, and then click back on your sigma, and then click this button here, and put in two. Immediately grab this guy, copy it, control C, and paste it, control V, into there, okay? Keep that in your clipboard for the rest of these problems. Otherwise, you have to do that every time, <laughs> all right? Don't do that. So our alternate hypothesis is that this is greater than the population variance. Think about this. If we're taking this one and dividing by this one, if both of these were equal to one, it would come out to one, all right? One divided by one is one, all right? And so rather than doing these as greater than or less than zero, you have to do it as greater than or less than one, all right? So group one is greater than the population. So this would be greater than one. Oh, sorry. Greater than one. All right. Because think about this. If this one was bigger, it'd be two. Two divided by one would be two. So that'd be greater than one. All right. So just these are always going to be out of one. <clears throat> Remember that. And of course, null hypothesis, mutually exclusive, includes everything else. <clears throat> so make sure you just do the opposite plus the equal on that one. If it's two tail test, it's equal, does not equal. All right. So type of test statistic for these is always F, all right, uh, because we're testing variances, and that's what we use the F distribution for, all right. So um, degrees of freedom, um, it's a little bit different than it was in the ANOVA table because we actually have different size samples here. And so in this one, when we're testing two, it's going to be the degrees of freedom for this one, and the denominator is going to be degrees of freedom for this one. And so all we have to do is take a look at this one, and degrees of freedom, N for two for one is 22, so our degrees of freedom is N minus one, which would be 21. And same thing on this one, it's 10, so degrees of freedom on this one is 10 minus one, nine. Don't screw that up, <laughs> so because that makes it a lot more difficult. Okay, so value of the test statistic. All right, so now we just have to calculate the F statistic for these, which is we're going to take this, the variance for our first group, and divide it by the variance for our second group. Okay, so let's just do that real quick. 2830.24 divided by 1128.96. There's our F statistic. So three decimal places, 2.5. Oh, seven. There we go. Okay, next piece. Um, sometimes it asks you for the p-value. Sometimes it asks you for the crit value. If it's the p-value, of course, you could just punch it in here. But, of course, it wants the crit value, so we have to do it the hard way on this one. So uh, we have to use the F table lookup here. Remember back from the F distribution problems to find our crit value at 0.05. Since this is greater than, we're looking to everything to the right. So we can just punch it in directly. And so that's F 
0.05 with our degrees of freedom 21 and 9. Now of course if this was the opposite and it was less than okay we'd have to do rather than f.05 it'd be f.95 okay the other side <laughs> so this is one of the only places in in all of alex at least right here where it might ask you to look at the other side of the f distribution and so just remember if it's crit value it'd be like this and if it's p value it'd be one minus this guy right here um some of that stuff is back in the um uh the f distribution problems okay so bam there we go there's our crit value 2.926 okay so um, using the crit value method here so the value of our test statistic all right is less than this okay now remember with the F distribution it goes like this and tail over here so our crit value is out here 2.96 but our F statistic is 2.05 which is down here we're only interested in stuff way over there greater than okay and so no no, in this case, since our this value is less than this value, we cannot conclude this. Okay, if it was greater than, then we could. So let's give that a check. And there we go. Whew, got one of them right. <laughs> okay. Now, if you do get something wrong on here, usually if you've done the rest in Chapter 12, you can diagnose it pretty quickly. All right. And in my, in my experience, it usually has something to do with degrees of freedom. Make sure you calculate those correctly because if you get these wrong, you get this wrong. You get this wrong. You get this wrong. <laughs> okay. So that's true with p-value as well. All right. All right. Oops. Well, I hit next topic there. All right. So <laughs> we'll just call that one good. Just uh, in the past. Well, here now, let's go ahead and do one. Ah, I don't want to, but let's do it. <laughs> let's see if we can find one here that's actually got um, the, the word problem. Yep. We got a word problem in here. All right. So we're going to do the exact same thing. All right. We're just going to make sure that we um, read this problem really carefully to pick out the information that we need. So our hypotheses are always going to be ratio. So if you were smart and left that in your clipboard, you can just do a control V right there. And so we can jump right to the conclusion. Can we conclude at the 0.01 significance level that the population variance of communication measures is less than the population, than the second uh, population variance of population one is less than. And so this one's going to be less than one. And this one's going to be greater than or equal to one. So this one, we're going to have to look at the other side of the F distribution. Be very careful with that one. So always use F statistic. And the information that you need to pull from here is the sample size right now. So remember, we need to get degrees of freedom. So our sample for our first population is 27. So degrees of freedom is N, 27 minus 1, which would give us 26. And then the second one here, denominator degrees of freedom is 19. 19 minus 1 gives us 18. Because remember, our n is 19 minus 1 is 18. Value of the test statistic. So when you get one that's all text like this, what you have to do is you have to divide the population variances. So start with population 1, 1, 0, and that's right here. 1, 0, 2, 6, 1, dot, oops, 2, 6, 1, dot, six nine divided by the variance for population two you can completely ignore the means on these four three eight dot seven six there's our f statistic right there the value of the s statistics zero dot three eight eight okay p value so p value on this one be very careful notice that this is pain we're looking for things to the left less than okay so to get our p value on this one we actually have to punch this in to the p-value calculator right here okay with 26 and 18 degrees of freedom which i'm pulling from right there now here's the tricky part on this one since it's less than we're looking to the left we got to do the complement rule one minus so bam there's our p-value right there 0 0.014 okay now, if this was crit value, this is a little bit more difficult. That's probably the most difficult problem you're going to find in here. If it's crit value, you have to look this up. And if it's less than, remember, if if it was asking me for 0.05, I'd have to put in 0.95. All right. So as I explained a little bit before. Okay. Hopefully that makes sense. But unfortunately here, we don't have to do it. We just have to use P value. And P value is easier because if my P value is less than my level of significance, 
0.01 and our p-value is 0.014 <laughs> if if this is greater than this in this case then no I cannot say that and it's just barely there in real statistics that would be close enough to call it good but not here all right got that one right phew Okay, so these take a long time to do, all right? Make sure you scrape out yourself some time. Make sure that you get this guy right here punched into your um, your clipboard so you can copy-paste it. Otherwise, you have to build that whole thing every single time. And be very, very careful as you move through these problems. And so that's why I say save these, these for the last thing that you've got in Chapter 12. And um, quite honestly, if there's a problem that you want to burn five extra credit points on, this would be the one. <laughs> okay, so or just call it good and move on. It's not going to prevent you from keep going with this one. Um, you know, if you uh, if you don't get this one right right off the bat, so you know, and you can always come back to it later. But it is frustrating. It does take some time, and um, it, it it's it's difficult. So if you get any questions on this one, please ping me. Let me know. Um, and you know, maybe I can help you through it. But other than that, um, just take your time, pay really close, careful attention to what you're doing and good luck. <laughs> All right. We'll see you in the next video. Take care now. Bye.